right, so why don't we do a review on the Dwarf Gray P, or is it P Dwarf Gray? I think it's the Dwarf Gray P. That's what it's called. Now, just so we're clear on this, when they say dwarf, it's not the plant is dwarf. It's the actual pea itself. It's a very small pea pod. Okay, so when I when I originally planted this, I thought it was a dwarf plant producing regular sized pods, and it was just the opposite. It's producing dwarf pods with regular sized plants. So these, you can see these things are probably close to four feet now. They're already touching the top, and they're still growing. And it really put out a lot of pods. I'm not sure if this is like a determinate type of plant. Like once it puts out all its flowers and pods, it kind of just dies. So it might do that. I'm not entirely sure. But we'll do a taste test on the peas. Now, I eat these when they're fully, you know, mature like this. And I also try to eat these, but these aren't as good when they're thin like this. They're not good because they got spines in it and they're woody, even when they're in a small size like that. So they're very woody and spiny. I'll taste test them for you, but I generally wait till they get to this size and I'll show you how I eat the peas once they get to that size. But just want to give you a look at the plants. I'm going to back up here. You can see they go all the way up to the top. They're doing quite well. Peas are the kind of vegetable you can plant two or three times a year. I planted these early in the season. Now you now have peas. I just planted a whole bunch more different pea varieties and I will get peas probably mid-season, maybe end of July, maybe going into August. And I'm gonna plant peas again in uh, whenever they're done, basically. And then I'll get a third crop of peas. So peas are very fast growing. You could basically do three succession plantings, possibly even four, depending on your location. So we'll, we're going to review some of the other pea varieties I got. And I probably got over a dozen varieties. So anyway, let's pick one of these. And let's give it a taste test. I'll show you what the pod looks like first. That's the pea pod. Dwarf gray pea. I don't know why they call it gray because it's not gray at all. But... All right, so that's the dwarf gray pea. Let's turn you around and give it a taste test. All right, guys, what's going on? We're going to do a taste test on the pea pod. It's a dwarf pea. You can see it's very small. It's smaller than my, it's probably half the size of my, my pointer finger. If you look, very small pod. Uh, the peas in here are fully developed pretty much. They're not to the point where they're starting to dry. I hope not. You can eat them raw. You don't have to wait until they get to... You, you don't have to pick them and eat them when they're flat-like, you know. So you can pick... You can eat these peas when they're fully developed. You just don't want to wait too long because they start to get hard at that point. And then once they get to that point, you really don't want to eat them because they're too hard, you know. All right, so let's open this up and give it a go. Show you the peas on the inside. Alright, so that's what the peas look like on the inside. Hopefully that's not too blurry for you. And I'm just going to kind of chew the peas out of there. And uh, I'm not going to eat the skin on it. Because the skin's got a spine in there. And then it's also got a lot of fiber. And you really, it's too hard to chew and swallow. So, But let's uh, give that a go. got a very slight sweetness to it very mild in flavor if you ever eaten raw peas you you probably know what they taste like but these got a nice mild flavor and they're smooth and they chew up very easily so they're great for eating raw if you would like to eat your vegetables raw your peas or your beans or anything you can eat these raw and they, they got a just real smooth flavor you're just gonna have to eat a lot of them because they're small pods so let me finish this Mm. 
man, those things are good. They have a slight nutty flavor to them, very slightly. Very smooth. I really like to eat my, my peas fresh and raw like that. They really taste good. Very, very smooth. Definitely worth growing, except, again, they're small pods, so what I would probably recommend if you're foraging generally, I mean, if you're just collecting them and you want to freeze them, that's a different story. You still can freeze them. You could pull them out of the pods and freeze them, but if you're foraging like me, you're probably going to want to pick two or three at a time and just peel them all at once and pop the whole thing in your mouth because they're so small. There's really there's not much to them, so I'm going to pick a, a, a flat one for you. An unripened one and I'm gonna to try to chew it and then it, it describe why I don't eat these this particular variety of pea uh, you know like this normally I like to eat my peas like that I eat the whole pod and everything with it but once they get that spine in there and they're too fibery you really can't eat them so let's see what that tastes like Definitely not that good like that. These peas you don't want to eat when they're flat. You want to wait till they're mature and eat the fresh peas. That thing had kind of a green flavor to it. It wasn't really tasty. It was fibery. There was the spine in the middle and you're chewing it up like bubble gum. So they're definitely not something you want to eat like that. I, I like them a lot when you eat the peas fresh. That's when, they're, that's when they taste their best. Here's another one. I just picked another one for you. I'll just throw the whole thing in my mouth and spit the uh, the shell out. Okay, that one I just ate was a little bit on the on the kind of getting hard side. And it kind of tasted like the flat pea, that not so good of a flavor. So picking these peas and eating them raw, you got to get them at the right time. If you wait until I start that, that husk on it starts getting a little bit on the yellow side and those peas start to harden up, they don't taste that good when they get to that point. You want to get them when they're still, when they're plump, but they're still green like and soft see how that's still green like that you want to get them like that and the, and the skin is kind of crisp and it wants to break off real easy you want to get them like that don't wait until they start to turn yellow and they're starting to harden up because they don't really taste that good Let's give that a go. Mmm. Perfect. Wow, that's good, man. There's only about four to five peas in these pods, just so you know. They're not very big. You have to eat a lot of them. And it doesn't look like the plant is generally that productive. Take a look at it. It doesn't look like it's really that productive, but it's still early in the season. It's still making flowers, so it might not be done yet, but it is starting to yellow down here, and that's telling me that the plant's pretty much getting ready to give up the ghost. And when it does that, you know, when it starts looking like that, that means, you know, it's probably getting ready to be done. They, they may, may need to be pulled. But it's still producing flowers, and so I should still get some more pods off it. But I really didn't get that many pods off it, considering the amount of plants that came up and the amount of, you know, it just really not that many pods. I'm just not that impressed with it. Though the peas are good, but again, they're a dwarf type of pea. You're going to have to grow quite a few of them, and rather than what I got here, which is a small little batch. You're probably going to want to grow... A container like this tightly you know you, you want to keep them like maybe two inches apart and just grow a real thick bed of them and let them grow wild like that maybe outdoors they'll grow a little better and get the pods off it that way 
you'll probably get a better harvest from it. But this is the kind of a pea that if you're growing them for freezing them and saving them, I, I would probably say you're going to have to grow a lot of them. You're going to really have to grow a lot. Just growing one package worth of them is not really enough. You need to grow like four or five packages of them, let them spread out, and then you'll start getting some you'll start getting some quantity that's worth freezing. I mean, what are you going to freeze here? I don't even have much on here, considering the amount of uh, plants and everything I got. It all went into the to the growth of the plant and everything. So we'll see. I mean, if, if the um, plant continues to flower and keep putting out pods for the rest of the, or at least halfway through the summer, well, then that might change my opinion. But as of right now, the amount of pods I see on there and the few flowers that I see still coming out, Eh, I'm not really that impressed with it, but again, it's a good pea. I like them. They taste really good. They're great. So if you see them, pick them up. I'll try to offer seeds or I'll offer these at the end of the year on my website. All right, so I'll just give you a quick update on my dwarf gray peas. I'm not exactly thrilled with this particular variety of pea. It's pretty much like a determinant. It reached its growing height, it reached its full potential, it put out all its pods, and that was it. With a lot of the other pea varieties I grow, which I'm growing more peas over here, and they're a little slower coming up. I got uh, some regular peas there, I got some sugar daddy snap peas there. I have, uh, what are those called? Field peas, Austrian field peas. And I got a number of peas growing here. So I'm growing a few more, and generally these peas they're more like an indeterminate pea, and they grow and last a lot longer. They'll stay green pretty much the whole season. Whereas this particular variety of pea came up, put out all its pods, and basically died. And it's not because I'm not watering it or not giving it nutrition. It just died. That was it. It's done. So I'm not very thrilled with this variety. Though I will offer seeds for you if you're somebody who likes to freeze the peas. And you want to grow a whole crop of these and you want to freeze them for winter, that, then they're fine. If you don't mind cooking them and freezing them and cooking them like that. Whereas I'm somebody who forages and I like to eat my peas fresh with the pods. You really don't want to eat these pods. But yeah, they pretty much died. I mean, there's a couple here that might still be alive. I'm just going to end up ripping these all down and we're going to grow something else in there. Maybe we'll try another bean of some kind. I'm not going to do a bush bean, but... Maybe I'll do another type of stalk bean like uh, the fava beans that I'm growing here. Maybe we'll do something in the back. I don't know yet. But I want to clear that space out and plant something else and get this mess out of here because it isn't doing anything anymore. It's over. It's done. But I got a good amount of peas on here. I will offer a small couple portions of this, of this variety of pea on my website and you can pick them up there. I will let them finish curing on the plant. And I'm not going to be able to ship them until probably the fall. I want them to fully cure and everything before I actually ship them. So what I do is I just pick them off the plant at this point. I, I don't keep them in the sun anymore. I bring them indoors, let them fully dry out, and then I give them about a month to cure and dry. And then that way when I sell them to you, they're, they're ready to be planted. They're not still green or anything. All right, so yeah, I just wanted to give you a quick update. Add this to the end of the video. For the review on the Dwarf Grey Pea, like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.